Good afternoon, my friends, my people, my companions, my boys, my girls here as well. We're back for Patrick Kane. Watch Party 5. And yeah, uh, this has been a never-ending saga that continues. And we still have to wait a couple more days by the look of things. So that's the unfortunate part. However, of course, we, we know at this point that's going to take it till Wednesday for this trade to go down, but might as well go live, talk some hockey with uh, with everyone in chat, because why the hell not? Remember to leave a like on the stream if you do enjoy the content that you're watching. The growth here has been great lately, and you guys have been killing it with support. I really do appreciate it a ton. Subscribe if you guys are tuning in and you are new. And yeah, pop the notifications on so you know when I upload. But we got a lot. We got a lot to talk about as per usual. The Rangers played a game yesterday, so maybe we could have some conversation there. We'll figure out which way we want to go with things when it comes to the Rangers. And obviously, again, Kane's going to take up a chunk of the conversation as he has for the past week now, pretty much. So, yeah, that's going to be what it will be. And yes, there is the Keandre Miller hearing today. I expect that to be a three-game suspension. And the reason why is because of the fact that Garnet Hathaway had a three-game suspension when he did a similar thing. And then there was one other player that Statboy Steven tweeted out that got suspended for the same thing, that got suspended for three games. So we're going to have to probably wait three games to see Keandre Miller again, which is the unfortunate part, which whether it was by accident or not, it happened, and it will be what it will be, unfortunately. So, yeah, uh, we'll have to wait and say. I don't know uh, if we're going to find out today or tomorrow, though. So what the Rangers could do cap wise, if they have to, they could fit uh, Kane into the cap on the uh, on Wednesday. On Wednesday, they could fit Kane into the cap. And if they have to, since they'll be short on cap space, they could go one or two options. They could run shorthanded. That's the first option. Second option is they decide to uh, call up Libor Hayek on an emergency loan. So it could go two different ways uh, with that. But I could confidently say that Patrick Kane's uh, going to be a Ranger on Wednesday. I could confidently say that. But of course, I, 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 as I have to clear up every time because I don't want people to be pissed off with me. Uh, I'm not an insider. I don't have inside information. I'm just relaying information that I'm seeing, of course, all over the internet from people that either are insiders or that have sources that have been tweeting things out. Like Avery has on Twitter. He's been very up to date. He thinks that this trade's actually going to happen tomorrow, which... I'd be shocked if it happens tomorrow because I think that they want to accrue the proper amount of cap space by Wednesday to get this done. And just because extra cap space never hurts. But again, I we've seen crazier things happen and maybe it does happen tomorrow, which I hope it does just so this thing ends. But again, we don't know yet. We just don't know yet. Yeah, and hopefully Lindgren will be back soon. If Lindgren's fine to go on Wednesday, then the Rangers won't have to run shorthanded at all, and that would be the best-case scenario because then Kane could just come right in and they'll have 12 forward, 6 defensemen right away. And worst-case scenario, Lindgren's not ready to go. If they have to dress 6 defensemen, they could just dress Ryan Lindgren and th uh, throw him on the bench and have him not play at all like they did with Brain Schneider last game and essentially run shorthanded that way. If those are the rules. But I wouldn't mind whatever route they go down again, as long as this gets done by Wednesday at this point. That's all that I really want to happen personally. And yeah, uh, I don't know why the comments are coming through on this side. There we go. VC Goody and Mutt. 
is an A tier fourth line come playoff time. Yes, that's the type of fourth line that you want. And the fact that people are still saying go after Nick Benino, go after Nick Bukestad is just absurd to me. When you make your fourth line better by getting Patrick Kane as well. It's not just upgrading your top six. You're killing two birds with one stone. <sighs> because he has proven that he's he's been playing with this hip injury since the last year and he put up 96 points last year. The hip injury is not an issue. He still has it. And for the playoffs, yeah, it's going to be a grind and it's going to be two months, but he says that he feels fine to deal with it. So as long as he's fine and what's what there is to love about Kane is that he's one of the greatest players when he's at the top of his game. That's what there is to love about Kane. Yes, Kane will be coming Wednesday. At least to my knowledge, at the very least, and based on the information that we have. And I can tell you right now, God forbid this deal falls through, I'm going to be absolutely livid. That I could tell you. Anybody going to uh anyway in chat here going to Thursday's game, by the way, which might be his first game as a Ranger at the Garden? Would love to know. Yeah, we uh we touched on Miller getting uh gonna have a hearing, MJ. We got three top lines that can light the lamp and a great checking fourth line. No way people can doubt this team any more than they did last year. Yeah, people were we were celebrating Andrew Kopp last year, which Andrew Kopp's a good player. Don't get me wrong, but you're talking Patrick Kane. You're talking Vladimir Tarasenko. I'm sorry, but those two are clearly better than Andrew Kopp and Frank Vitrano. And yeah, what? Who, good luck for matchup lines. Good luck. Luca, what's going on? Okay, last year they went to the playoffs with, like, I don't know, 90% of the roster, I want to say, or 80% of the roster having zero playoff experience, and they went to the conference finals. Kane's at least been there at some point. And not only has he been there, he's shown up when he's there. Been one of the best players in the playoffs. There's a reason his nickname's Showtime. And we're two days away from this. We're two days away. Potentially tomorrow. That's what Avery's been saying on Twitter, and he's been on the money. When it comes to recent trades, when it comes to Vladimir Tarasenko, he was on the money with that and with others. So it's interesting to see if he ends up being correct about this, which I can tell you right now, I'm not going to get sleep if this, considering this thing might go down. Yeah, I'm going to need to get a Kane jersey for sure. Yeah, these... These two days are going so although today's been going pretty quick so far for me. I think tomorrow's gonna feel really slow though. That that's not gonna happen, Vincent. They're not gonna get Max Domi. They have the cap space because Matt Murray's on LTIR right now. That's why they have the cap space to get that done.
Patrick Kane's still only 34, and he's proven that he still has it. He's close to a point-per-game player again. He just had a rough stretch at the start of the season. But if you've watched him lately, he's been on an absolute heater. You can't rule anything out, Viper, but I wouldn't expect it. So don't hold out hope that it goes down tonight. Hey, Barkley Gudra's not going anywhere until the summer, if he's if it's any time. Leafs actually have to cut $2 million in cap when Murray comes back. They could activate him in the playoffs if they want to, if they want to wait that long for Matt Murray. Which it would make sense for him to do at this point, just to protect him from further injury. And either way, they're doing completely fine with Wool and, uh, and Samsonov in goal. Yeah, which is fine, but he has no incentive to waive that no trade clause. So Barker Gudra is not going to go anywhere. He's. Yeah, that's a fair argument, but he's not going to play in the playoffs. Their goalie into the playoffs is going to be Sam Sonoff. They're not going to start Matt Murray in a playoff game. Thanks for joining, MJ. Appreciate it. Well, yeah, people just aren't paying attention. That it's okay that people don't pay attention, but uh, it's be it's unbelievable at the same time too that people are just uh just this clueless. Again, like there's still people that are saying that this Kane trade isn't going to go down. The Rangers, I could promise you, would not have done what they did yesterday if this trade wasn't going down. I think it's absolutely ridiculous that people are saying that this trade's still not going down. It's either Blackhawk fans that are going to miss Patrick Kane, and rightfully so, or it's the Ranger fans that look at the charts and say they don't want him. Yeah, Domingue's uh, in Hartford right now, and he'll be called up come uh, come playoff time because Hartford's not going to make the playoffs. Just as the third goalie, in case, God forbid, the Rangers need him. Kane is the last piece. This team is set. We have a great chance for a run with Kane. This may be the best Rangers team on paper we've had in history. Yeah, and people are still trying to justify the fact that Nick Benino or Nick Bukestad would be a better fit for the Rangers. So it's wild. It's wild, Bobby. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a super team. It's going to be... It's going to be unreal. It's going to be unreal. It's going to be fun to watch. We're going to have to cherish every single moment that we have with Patrick Kane here because this is going to be one of the best teams that we've seen the Rangers put it on the ice.
I'm never going to say no to a, a all-time superstar. I don't know what fans are complaining. Yeah, I, I'd love to know, too. They just look at the charts, and they think that this guy is not a good player at all. It's just mind-blowing to me. And he's clearly shown over the past week or so that he still has it. And people know about his defensive woes. We're not expecting him to come in here and win the Selkie. But, again, the team defense is a problem itself. If they get, They're going to address that, too. So... Yeah, exactly, Trey. Yeah, the garden's going to be it's going to be a, it's going to be electric. It's going to be a madhouse on Thursday and I will be there. When they announce Kane in the starting uh lineup, it's going to be chills, going to be it's going to be so loud in that building. Yeah, this is going to be fun to watch. If you just watch, like, I've been going back and watching them in Chicago, uh, watching highlights from then, and it's just like, oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. Well, yeah, it is a disappointing season if they lose, but that's the gamble that you take when you're contending. The New Jersey Devils just threw the kitchen sink to get Timo Meyer. If they lose, you could consider it a failure of a season. But the idea is that Patrick Kane helps you beat those teams. That's the idea. And I don't get fans saying all of this, oh, we are not tough enough crap. Like after the last few seasons, this team learned to play in the playoffs and big games in my opinion, but the Rangers are a good balanced team. It's because they miss Ryan Reeves. Like, I just, I, I don't, it's just mind blowing to me. Like, if you just, like, the Rangers just, they have enough grit. It's like, I address this every single live stream. They have enough grit, and it's just mind blowing to me that people would say no to Kane because they'd rather, they would have rather a guy like Tanner Janot. After looking what Janot just got in return, Hell no, the Rangers gang Tanner Janelle. Patrick Kane's going to be cheaper and he's a way better player. And people act like these players that play with grit and skill grow on trees. If they could find one of those players, great. Go out and get one. But they don't grow on trees. There's a reason a guy like Tom Wilson is so popularized in the league. Because it's rare what he does. We have guys who will step up. Uh, if other teams are going to try to get uh, crazy, I disagree with saying the Rangers still too soft or not tough enough. Exactly. Yes. Especially Jacob Trouba. We literally saw what he did single-handedly to the Chicago Blackhawks earlier in the season. Uh, Evan, I think they're ridiculous. I think they're ridiculous. The fans that don't want Kane. Because it's just, it's funny. It's really funny that some fans would rather these fourth line players thinking, because like the logic of these fans, they think one player is going to step in and like oh, change the team's defense drastically. That's just non-existent. It's just not. Unless they go out and get a blue line piece, maybe, sure. Like a Norris level defenseman, sure. But that's not what Nick Benino or Nick Bukestad are. They're not going to change the team defense. That's on Gallant to change the team defense. Kane is one of those players where he's at the top of his game. He could change an offense.
Exactly, Trey. It's yeah. Uh Kane and Tarasenko will probably walk in the offseason. You might be able to keep one of them, but Yeah, they can maybe sign him on a team friendly deal. If he's willing to take it. But again, it's his right to go out and get money, so And yeah, the Flames, another known tough team that they that Truba absolutely walked all over. You think Kane's coming tomorrow? I hope so. I don't think so, but I hope so. That'd be hype, Trey. The garden would go wild. Yeah, and the Canes still aren't making any big trades, which is weird. Yes, exactly. You don't got to worry about the defense either too much when you're going to be in the offensive zone 90% of the game with a guy like Patrick Kane make it. Like, that's how big of a difference this type of guy makes. Yeah, it's a no-brainer, especially because he only wants to be here. If he wanted to go elsewhere and they got into a bidding war, I'd be hesitant about it. But he wants to come here. The price is not going to be high because of that. Let's go. Let's get this done. Well, technically, he'd be in Philly because he's got to get ready for the game in Philly. Well, yeah, obviously that was just a drastic number. That was just me overhyping and overstating. But the majority of the game with the Rangers, that type of offense, they should be in the offensive zone with that type of power that they have up front. Obviously, 90% is overboard. I'm not actually, I don't actually mean 90%, but the majority of the time, the Rangers should be in the offensive zone. I'd be pumped, and I'll be going live the second the trade happens, so hopefully. I'm down for either. To me, I, I'm down for either. I'd want one of them to be back, though, next year. If they could get one of them on a team-friendly deal, I'm not posted either. Glad all are excited as a Chicago fan. We got the best years out of him. Enjoy. Love the player, but the player does not play defense. Yeah, but we know what he does offensively, so. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. It's not going to be Friday, Luca. And yeah, if Igor gets back on his game, too. Yes, yes, Trey. Him and Tarasenko aren't going to play defense to the point it'd be a majority. They'll give it up as much as they score. Yeah, well, if the Rangers play like they did yesterday defensively, that then you're talking a whole different animal there because as a team defense, they were they were killing it out there. And that's really what it's gonna be a matter of it is systematically if the Rangers could get going defensively. Agree, Bobby.
Yeah, it's not the end all be all if they lose either. They'll pivot elsewhere. I'm not worried about that. Exactly, Rob. Like, that's what I, I just don't understand about this crowd that's saying he doesn't play defense. If they wanted help on defense, they'd go out and get a defenseman, not a forward. I still think Buffalo and Detroit, but, uh, you know, Detroit's a little bit behind the eight ball there to the point where it could maybe see the Islanders, but. I think it will be a combination of those three teams uh, in the mixer. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to make it, and I don't think Florida's going to make it. Yeah, I agree, Bobby. Yeah, it's probably going to be Brad Trocek and Kane. That's why Tarasenko was playing with Zabaja and Kreider yesterday, because they wanted to get him acclimated to playing with those two. Yep, exactly, Trey. Uh, I don't think Vladdy's going to care. He he knows that he's here to try and win a cup. I don't think he's going to be upset. I think he'll be just as happy playing with guys like Kreider and Mika. They're no slouch either. They'll experiment, like I've been saying, Bobby. I think that there's a chance that we see them move things around and maybe put Kane with Mika and Kreider, which is what I would be in favor of personally as well. But again, if they don't do it and they want to try Panarin and Kane together, I can understand that, but they'll see what works. How are you doing tonight, Andy? Thanks for stopping in. Edmonton makes sense. Pittsburgh's a little bit weird, though. Uh, I don't know. If Pittsburgh's really in a good spot. We got we're going uh international here. I love it. I love it. Uh they won't get check in. Yeah, like I've been saying, I think that we just got to stay. We just got to stay patient with Vladimir Tarasenko. Just stay patient and hope he gets hot at the right time. And there's no reason to panic until there's a reason to panic. Like I've been saying for him, I think that come playoff time, he's going to turn it up. And if I'm wrong, then I'll start to obviously worry. They w they're not going to do that just because they're going to want to throw the matchups off. That's the only reason. I like the confidence, too. The Cato lines will get that fire come playoff time again. Yes. Agree. Agree, Bobby. Completely agree. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like, whatever. I, I I just have been choosing to ignore the great comments, Trey, because I, I'm sick and tired of them. 
I am. Um, good question, Anthony. I don't believe they're going to change up the D pairs. Uh, just because they love Miller and Truba together, but I would split it up and try it considering the fact that Truba played one of his best games as a Ranger without Keandre Miller there last night. And I think that that pair has been a nightmare, but I don't think they're going to change that, to be honest with you. I I think that y you tip the cap to Gerard Gallant. I think that that's what it really is. He was disappointed with the effort that they had against Chicago. Or Chicago. I, Chicago's too much on my mind. Washington. Excuse me. And he had the boys prepared to play. A good defensive game. I think that's just what it is. I don't trust Harper or Hayek at all in the playoffs. Can't they give Robertson, uh, Scalin, et cetera, a look if they could handle games uh, before the playoffs? That's not going to happen. And Harper or Hayek aren't going to play in the playoffs either way. Yeah, Bobby, agree with this. And yeah, Harper played great last night. Completely agree with that as well. Let's see if anything's going on on Twitter right now. I doubt it, but take a look. Yeah, I, I'm amazed Hayek's still here, too. He's awful. Yeah, I think it's going to rejuvenate uh, everyone on the team. And I think Kane himself, it's going to rejuvenate him to be a better player when he gets here, Lewis. Yes, I'll be going live if it happens 12 a.m. The only way it's not happening the minute the trade happens is if I'm asleep, of course. But I'll be up at 12 a.m. just in case. But I'm going to wake up early on Wednesday as well just to be on the safe side of things. I like Jones better by a mile. Jones, but he may be gone in the deal. Yeah, Jones is probably gone in the in the cane trade. Yeah, Jay, this is probably possible. I would be shocked if that happened. Because they need to, because teams are going to want to improve, and Hartford's nowhere near the playoffs. So 
I don't know what's going on with Chikrin, but I'd love for that to end as well because this that's a trade that's been dragged out for way too damn long. So I'd love to know what's going on with Jacob Chikrin. But again, I'm not entirely sure. Excuse me, everyone. I have to take a call real quick. I'll, I'll be back in about five to ten minutes. So just bear with me here and keep sending in some good questions. All right, we're back. I apologize. Um, yeah, that's a. It's going to be an interesting game against Boston. That's for sure. Going to be a tough game, and I'd love for them to go out and win and prove to people that they could beat a team like Boston. Uh, not the Rangers, it seems like. The Rangers just, uh, for whatever reason, cannot admit they have a problem with their AHL system and just get it, uh, get it together. So, that would be nice, but unfortunately, they, uh, won't admit they have a problem. Like I talked about with Steven yesterday. Yeah, Tampa overpaid for Tanner Janot. And Tanner Janot had a career year last year that he's not going to have again. That's a name that infuriates me when I hear it, Tanner Janot, because I, I just don't see it with him. But I, I wouldn't be shocked, too, if Tampa writes him and gets him to be what he was in his rookie year, despite him having a stupid shooting percentage in his first year, which he's not going to replicate. Agree, Mario. Hopefully. Yeah, Schneider was sent down today so they could accrue cap space the next two days. That being today and tomorrow, I should say, not the next two. Angelisa, what's going on? Okay, we got news. So on the Chris Johnston show, CJ says he believes the third team that will be on Patrick Kane's contract has already signed off and been picked as well. So again, like we're reiterating here, this deal is freaking done, but we're waiting for the appropriate cap space. Which I've been stressing for a while, but. We're getting there. We're getting there. No, we don't know the team. The team wasn't uh, leaked in that tweet there.
Uh, I think it's Vancouver or Montreal. That's been my belief for a while. Um, whenever McDavid's a free agent, because I don't think that contract's movable at all. Which I know teams would line up at the door for a guy like McDavid, but four years left on that deal. So that's your answer to that. Yeah, Eddie, hundred percent. It's gonna, it's gonna get the team going. It's going now, and this has been a distraction for them for a bit now, and you could tell. So, Yeah, Kane jerseys are going to fly off the shelves. There's already people that pulled up to the garden in Kane jerseys uh, last night, which was cool. Yeah, nothing else really going on when it comes to the Twitter world with this thing. Uh, on NHL now, we're uh they're saying we're getting him tomorrow. I hopefully, I don't think so, but. <sighs> I think that it's just pointless to do it tomorrow because you don't play till Wednesday. But again, we'll we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Good question, Noah. Um, I'd say the Rangers for right now, but I could definitely say that the Devils have a better one in the future. That's for sure. The Devils next year are going to have a better top six just because of Kane and Tarasenko walking or at least one of them. But going forward, because I was talking about yesterday, the Devils top six is going to be disgusting in a few years when they have Alexander Holtz become a full-time top six winger for them. That top six is going to be disgusting for them. Holtz, Mercer, Heashier, Hughes, Meyer. Might have forgot someone in there, but... Regardless, they're gonna be they're gonna be disgusting in that top six. Either that or maybe there's no prospects in the deal. We'll have to wait and see. I agree, Luca. I think fifty fifty is a fair way to a fair assessment for if the trade happens tomorrow or not. I'm leaning more towards 60, 40, 60 being that it won't happen. Yeah, Pittsburgh for once has draft picks. No, because you got three Stanley Cups out of the guy, and he was one of the best players in team history, if not the best. So, no, Chicago fans, if, if anyone, if any Chicago fan looks down on Kane for this, I think they're being a bit ridiculous. But it's every fan's right to have an opinion when it comes to things like that. But I, I don't think it's fair to be mad at Kane if he is choosing where he wants to go, considering all that he gave for that organization. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a guarantee, but I, your chances go up, that's for sure. We got Nick joining now. 
better late than never, right? <laughs> yeah. My bad. Because I'm getting tired of talking here. <laughs> <clears throat> I got you. Uh, there's a chance that people are saying there's a chance the trade goes down tomorrow instead of Wednesday. Sooner the better. I have no complaints about that. Technically, the trade could happen today, but it's not going now. Yeah, probably not. Because the Rangers have the cap space to do it today, but they're going to want to accrue the cap space to be able to call up Schneider again. So technically it could happen today, but they wouldn't be able to call up Schneider. So tomorrow's probably the earliest that it could happen. You think it'll happen tomorrow or you think this for sure day is Wednesday? I'm leaning 60 40 towards it not happening tomorrow, but uh, it's definitely possible. Wouldn't shock you if it happened tomorrow, though, right? Uh, yeah, it wouldn't shock me because you have Avery, who's been on the money with guys like Tarasenko and others, he's been on the money with it, and he's been saying Tuesdays for the past few days. So it wouldn't shock me if it happened tomorrow. Avery said Tuesday for King tomorrow. Yeah. Hopefully that's right. Sooner the better for sure. It wouldn't shock me if uh, you know they try to get it tomorrow instead because um, they want to get him in in here as soon as possible. So he would start on start in Philly, of course, and then make his way over to the Garden. They said either way, if the trade happens Wednesday or tomorrow, he's gonna play against Philly. So, oh, huh. all right. Well, whatever works, I guess. Right. <laughs> yeah as long as this gets done at some point like yeah that's a fact 100 percent. as long as it's done by wednesday because i'm tired of talking about it for sure <clears throat> uh that's not gonna happen pittsburgh just extended letang and balkan they should go in a rebuild direction but they won't I don't know what time it's going to be announced, MJ, but all I can tell you is tonight and tomorrow I'm going to get zero sleep. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> and it's killing me. Uh, what are my lines of pairings? What would I do or what will they actually? Because what they'll actually be is Panarin, Trocek, Kane, Kreider, Zibanejad, Tarasenko. That would be your top six. The kid line would stay together, and then the fourth line would be VC, Goudreau, Mott. You said Panarin and Trocek on line one? Well, line one, line two, whatever it is. Oh, I was going to say. Yeah, Luca, everyone's tired of this waiting. <sighs> Thank you. We appreciate that. Can you imagine the draft picks Pittsburgh could get for Crosby, Malkin, and Latang? You could create a whole other team just with the picks. Yeah, but again, it's it's unlikely. Pittsburgh is already committed at this point. It seems like to trying to contend still, which I think is a mistake. But we'll see if it works out for them. I'm not sure if it could happen at midnight. I'll be up. But we'll we'll have to see. I think that if it's going to happen tomorrow, it's going to happen sometime in the morning or afternoon. I think what I'll say is if it doesn't happen by 5 or 6 p.m. tomorrow, I would say that at that point we're looking at Wednesday for it happening.
I'm going to get shells being at the game on Thursday and watching him play. That's for damn sure. Well, yeah, the Coyotes are just idiots and asking for way too much. So that's the whole reason Chikrin hasn't been traded because they're being completely unreasonable. I think they're asking for two first round picks for Chick Red. That's hilarious. Yeah, on Wednesday, I think it will happen early. If it's going to happen, like I said, we'll we'll find we're going to know tomorrow more information but chris johnson said the paperwork's done so with king i'll tell you exactly what the tweet was that i saw a few minutes ago before you joined but it was something along the lines here we go on uh, the Chris Johnson show, he said the third party team that will retain on Patrick Kane's contract has already signed off and has been picked as well. Oh, shit. Do we know what team or not yet? Well, it'll probably be leaked later on, right? Uh, yeah, it will be leaked later on, probably. I don't think it'll be leaked at all. I think we'll just know when it happens just because Drury's tight left with it. But. Damn. And then here's an interesting thing. Someone. Uh, replied saying, what's the return? And someone said, doesn't sound big. Maybe a second and a prospect. Wow. That's nuts. If it's just a second and a prospect, that would be absurd. That's a fact. 100%. You thinking Matt Robertson, maybe? Or Zach Jones? Robertson or Jones is my guess. Uh, I could see it being Zach Jones. I, I, I could see him fit in a... I could also see... Be- Stat Boy Steven brought up a good point yesterday. Uh, Chicago loves players like Brett Burrard, and he could be part of the deal potentially. Because they love smaller forwards with Kane, DeBrinket, guys like that. I suppose. He thinks that, and I found it interesting yesterday when I was listing the three guys that I've been saying for a while should be untouchables. He threw Bryce McConnell Barker's name in there, which was interesting to me. So if he gets moved tomorrow, that'd be interesting. Or Wednesday. Yeah. They they should keep Chickering, but he wants out. That's the issue with it. If they're truly asking for that, then they're out of their freaking mind. I could tell you that right now. If Timo Meyer fetched two firsts, Jacob Chickering's not worth three first. That's wild. Holy oh, shoot. Some of these teams just are ridiculous. Oh, I have to tell you this. They need new management. <laughs> I have not seen anything related to this, Jim, at all. And I could tell you right now that, no, they're not holding up the trade. Like I've been saying, they would not be doing all the cap gymnastics that they've done to get this done if they weren't going to do this deal. Um, I wasn't happy about it, Trey, because I wanted him to be a Met next year, but it is what it is. They'll pivot elsewhere. So, Oh, Panarin's picking him up from the airport, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's a heist right there if it's a second and a prospect. But that's what happens when a player wants out of an organization uh, and wants to go to one destination only. When's this likely happening? Miller's possible suspension may be impacting this trade? No. It's not going to impact the trade uh, at all. Like I mentioned earlier, they could go two different routes on Wednesday. If they have to dress six defensemen, 
what they they could go two routes with that. They could either play right or suit up Ryan Lindgren for that game and just have him sit on the bench like Schneider did, and they'll <laughs> technically have six defensemen in that game. Or if they're right up against the cap, they could call Hayek up on an emergency loan. And if both are true, if they have to, all they could do, uh, the last possible scenario they could do is just run out there with 12 forwards and five defensemen. So they have different avenues they could go down on Wednesday with that. So I don't think a suspension is going to impact anything there. Will Vishmel could be traded? Uh most likely. Yeah, I haven't seen a single one of these tweets at all. Yeah, we're we're waiting. It Drury's waiting, we're waiting. Everyone's waiting for this trade to fully just be done. Yeah, uh, like I've been saying, I think that it's possible that we see some AHL trades. Like, that's the only other trades we're going to see after the Kane deal that the Rangers might make. We saw last year Batetto get traded for Merkley. We've seen Joey Keane, Julian Goche get flipped for each other. So, it's definitely possible. I hope this is the case. That would be hype. I think the big lesson to the NHL is these no trade clauses, no movement clauses kill teams uh, with leverage. I think this is a trend that uh, trend that needs to be addressed. These high level UFAs it can't have bidding wars with no trade clauses. Well, I think it's going to be interesting to see next CBA negotiations. I don't think this is going to happen, but it's been suggested by others that maybe they're going to switch up the maximum amount you could sign players to to four or five years instead. Mm. I don't know if that's going to happen because the NHLPA would be super against that, but it would be interesting to see if that happens because that will change things drastically. Why did he tweet what he did? Uh, I have no idea, but he's a troll. So at times, so take it with a grain of salt. I think people are forgetting the Rangers have to send assets to Chicago and the third party team. I think it's going to cost them more than you think a few roster players and a few draft picks. It's not going to cost roster players. I could, I could tell you it's not going to cost roster players prospect. Yes. Not roster players. It will cost them probably just like a fourth round pick for the third team. It's not going to be anything drastic for the third team. What'd you think of Trotz becoming the GM of the Predators yesterday? Well, Trotz will never uh, be a co- well. I, I never say never, but probably not going to be a coach for at least a while. But unless if he just does a horrible job, um, I don't know what to think. I, you know, it's a first time, you know, for everything, and see how he does. I, I had really no thoughts on it. I still would have liked to see him coach in the league still, but yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, I found it interesting for sure. (laughs) 
That's a that would be reasonable, Jay. That would be very reasonable if they did something like that. The next CBA negotiation is going to be a nightmare. I have a feeling we're going to be in for a lockout. <laughs> And then what did you think yesterday of the uh, Tanner Janot trade? What did I think about it? Yeah. I had no thoughts, to be honest with you. I was just <laughs> I was just like, oh, cool. You didn't think they overpaid? Let me look at the deal again. There was five draft picks and Cal Foot. This is a different circumstance. Gabrick wanted out. Yeah, they probably overpaid just a little bit with all the draft picks, but um, I don't know. It is what it is, I guess. It's Tampa Bay. <laughs> yeah, they do this every year. And that's the only reason that I don't know if I'll doubt them with this. Where are you seeing this, Jim? Either way, I'm not moved at all. <laughs> um... More likely it doesn't than does happen, but it's possible. That's all I could say with that. And I hope that happens tomorrow, just so we're done. A big blockbuster by Vancouver just now. Josh Bloom for Riley Stillman. <laughs> this trade deadline is going to be such a... Such a dud. I'm probably not even going to go live for it anymore. What did you say? I said this deadline's going to be such a dud to the point where I'm probably not even going to go live for it anymore. Oh, yeah, for real. There's literally no names left at this point. <laughs> yeah, they already got off the market. I Like, Chikrin is probably the biggest name. After that, there's nobody. They should have just made the deadline in February again. Yeah, that's a fact. They technically have the cap space today, Mikey, and I think that they'll have the cap space tomorrow to get it done if they wanted to, but I'm not 100% sure. I think that they could, but they probably want to accrue more cap space just because it doesn't hurt. 
So that's why they might wait until uh, until Wednesday. But technically, I think they could do it tomorrow. Let me see if Cat Friendly has anything about it. I don't see anything there, unfortunately. Let's see if Puckpedia has anything about it. Not at all. But we've seen people say that it's going to happen tomorrow. They apparently said on NHL Network that they think it's going to happen tomorrow. And then we also heard that... Uh, Avery tweeted out that he thinks it's going to happen tomorrow. He's been tweeting multiple times that Tuesday it's going to happen. So we'll see. I mean, yeah, this is something that I could rant about for hours and hours, but I won't do it. But yeah, the fact that in the NHL, you will like, the MLB, the amount some players are getting paid in the NHL doesn't even get you a bench player's limb in the MLB. Like, that's how bad it is with the salary cap. Carlson's not going to get moved. I don't even know what Carolina's going to do now. I have zero guesses. Barbashev's off the market. Like the only way the only move I could maybe see them making is circling back to Max Domi like they did last year. That's really about it. Like I Gustav Nyquist. JVR, that's really about it. off topic but are you guys Knicks fans and if you are what's your thoughts on them yes uh we both are and my thoughts on them is that they are they're just there <laughs> they just are they'll make the playoffs but they're just there i don't know if they're good enough to win around i think they'll win around at most though this year Hayes, I don't know if anyone's going to take that contract. Connect me, Lawton, and D'Angelo. You might see some of those guys on the move, depending on their contract status. They'll trade any pending UFAs. Technically, this is a hockey and baseball channel. Thoughts on the Sam Lafferty trade? Um, I thought that Toronto and Chicago both got good value from each other. Um... Yeah, uh, Chicago stockpiles more draft picks that they desperately need to help their rebuild because they're not going to get a lot for Patrick Kane. So the fact that they got what they did in that deal is very impressive. Another first round pick now add to it. They have two first round picks for the next three seasons. They have three seconds this year, two seconds next year, two sec, uh, two thirds this year and next year. They're stockpiling picks and they're doing a good job for their rebuild. And then Toronto... We'll see if it gets them over the hump to help them win around for once. Um, but again, remains to be seen if that could happen. But I like the trade for both sides. You think this is the year Toronto gets it done, right? You said it before this trade tail, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they get over the hump this year. I don't know how far they'll make it, but I do think they'll win around this year. I think they're due. I just have a hard time imagining Samsonov outdoing Vasilevsky. Like, that's my issue. I like roster wise, I think Toronto's better, but it with the goalie matchup, Tampa just outclasses Toronto by a mile. Isn't Vazzy not having his best year or is he having a good year? I didn't check. He's having a pretty good year right now. Good and year. even then, last year he had a down year in the regular season, but then the playoffs came around and he turned into an animal. 
You never know. I mean, did we expect Columbus Blue Jackets to beat the Lightning in 2019? No. So I always go back to that. So you just never know, dude. Fair point. Let alone sweeping them. I mean, that's insane. I think the series definitely goes to seven, though. That's for sure. Yeah. It sucks for Toronto, though, because I think they'd be able to beat a couple other teams, but unfortunately for them, they have to play Tampa. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if I want to. I kind of want the curse to, you know, keep up. But at the same time, I, I want Tampa to be the ones or the suckers to you know, have it, you know, be broken on them just so if we ever play Toronto again, if we ever play Toronto in the playoffs, whether it's, you know, next year or the following year, then, or even this year, honestly, like, it's not like, oh, like, you know, someone else already lost and the curse is um, already broken. So it's not like we can get clowned as fans. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I also want Toronto this year because I would rather face them than Tampa Bay in the playoffs. But at the same time, if Toronto beats Boston, then I'm a little worried about them. Yeah, no, 100% for sure. I'm with you on that. Yeah, well, 100%. No, I didn't see Carlson's quote. I just don't see Carlson getting moved at all with that cap hit. I'm sure they try to look to move him, but I'm sure they're exploring it, but I don't know who's going to yeah. be the ones to do it. Like with the amount of cap that that is, I think that teams are more intrigued by Chikrin. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is what I'm worried about. Iceman. Um, hopefully, it doesn't happen considering Keandre Miller had a statement and everything and talked about how it was an accident. Doubt he was understanding of it. So hopefully not much comes of it, but we'll have to say. Yeah, just because it was an accident. I don't know if Hathaway was, was an accident or not. I don't, I don't remember. But um, if it was on purpose, sure. But if, if it was an accident, then should be worried for Miller. Where are you seeing this, Luca? That's a move again that doesn't phase me at all. I feel like if we can beat the Cavs, uh, we could see them in the first round. Or if we see the Cavs... Wait, if we can beat the Cavs, if we see them in the first round. But that's me being a crazy Knicks fan. It's definitely going to be tough. Uh, it would be nice to see them beat the Cavs, considering the whole Donovan Mitchell saga that went over uh during the off season so that would be nice to beat donovan mitchell but again we'll have to wait and see if they could actually get it done i think he'll have a good year again but he's just there's no way he's doing what he did last year that's for sure tanks this year or he goes no why would he tank this year I think he I, I think he'll have a good year it's just I don't think he's gonna have the year he did last year yeah I think he'll hit instead of 62 somewhere between 40 and 50 home runs which still isn't bad at all no, that's very good 40 home runs 40 plus 30 plus is actually good yeah good season I think he I'm gonna say Judge hits like 280 and he has yeah. 40 jacks this year. I could get behind that. Uh, my expectation is Stanley Cup, Copper Bust, Copper Bust. I'm gonna say I'm at gonna, the same time, you play Boston. I'm not too mad if you lose to them, but with still, yeah, late. I'm gonna say, yeah, no, Copper Bust. I'm with you, however. 
you lose to Boston. That's the only pass I give you. Other than that, it's cup or bust. Um, especially when you're getting Patrick Kane, you're not getting Patrick Kane to just take a step in the right direction for the future. You're getting Kane to win the cup or help you win the cup. And, you know, cup or bust for sure. I find it hilarious that double fans are just thinking that they're going to win the Stanley cup or face Boston in the conference final. I'm like, I, I think they're overhyping their own team personally. I think they are overhyped. I think it's just, I don't think it, they're just not even going to do well in the playoffs. That's just me though. Especially if we stick to our strong defensive game, you know, I don't see it. That's just my opinion, though. So I agree with you. I think that uh, well, honestly, if- let him get cocky. Let him get cocky. That's fine because the it'll it'll show in in the playoffs where the experienced Rangers will just outmatch or outduel the Devils in every fashion. And know. we've been on that side. We when we were going into that bubble series against Carolina, we were very cocky as Ranger fans, thinking they were going to handle yeah. Carolina easily. So you'll definitely live and learn or play and learn. But, you know, offense got to go to the Rangers without a doubt. And then the defense, obviously Rangers and then goaltending. So, you know, Igor, assuming he turns it that, you know, turns it up a little bit here. It's Rangers in every way, offense, defense and goaltending. I don't think there's much debate. I think the Devils are only where they are right now is just because of the crazy start they had. Other than that, they would probably be below us maybe considering how close we are now to them i can argue that they could be below us we could be second they could be third either that or we're battling it out and it's closer yeah and i think that also like they're the way that they play just doesn't scream playoff hockey to me at all like that's the other thing that doesn't worry me too much about new jersey is lindy rough in the playoffs honestly you're you're gonna you're really gonna sacrifice your defense just so you can have four guys up in a rush to try to fill the net up as much as possible. Like you're not going to, if you can't play those two, one, three, one type battle games, like you're not going to go far in the playoffs. Teams like Boston are going to be playing that against you. Teams like Carolina Carolina could be playing like that as well. Teams like, um, you know, the Rangers, we, which we kind of saw, you know, in the playoffs, um, maybe not as much as round one, but, you know, later on, like when we play Carolina or um, where we uh, play Tampa more specifically, um, you know, we are, those were type, some type battles uh, towards the end. So, yeah, if you're not, if you think you're going to get away with scoring seven goals and winning seven to five in a playoff game, yeah. You're mistaken. You were very mistaken. Chick, when you go to LA? Yeah, I've been on that train for a bit. Uh, I'm rooting for both teams to play a long seven game series and for them to play, uh, for them to be banged up by the end of it. That's what I'm rooting for in that series. So the Rangers have an easier time in the second round. Yeah. Sick profile pick, by the way. <laughs> the Bruins have one weakness, and that is the pressure is all on them between their record and how Boston sport fans are so spoiled. The only issue I have with that is they're such an experienced team, man. Like, yeah. they've been there, done that before. It's just like, I don't know if the pressure is going to really get to them. And they already have a couple guys that were still from that 2011 cup cup run. So, you know, Bergeron, um, Marchand, who else? I'm crazy. He's not on the Bruins anymore. Is he? Yeah, he is. He is. Was it? I don't, was he in 2011 though? Uh, I don't know. Regardless though, I, I think he was in the 2013 final when they lost to Chicago. So they have guys that were in the 2019 final when they lost. Oh, f- I honestly forgot they were in the 2019 final as well. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, the experience is there. It's just, you know, yeah. I don't think a team's going to overpay for Carlson, to be honest. And yeah, uh, and it was Lafreniere, not Heedle, but yeah, I, I think it's ridiculous how we just pretend that didn't happen. But 
Just because it's Stamkos. <laughs> Carlson said, you traded a guy like Timo. I don't think that shows that this is going to be a quick turnaround. It's unfortunate. I understand what needs to be done from an organizational perspective. And it just sucks that it happened to be where I'm at in my stage of my career. Well, yep. Your fault. It's your fault. Um, signed with San Jose, though. So should have signed elsewhere, I guess. Well, he was yeah. traded there, but. Well, he signed an extension, though. Was his extension signed with San Jose or Ottawa? I believe. I can double check. Well, not only that, but it's your fault, too, for getting locked up on an albatross of a contract. Like, that's the. Like, it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, it was San Jose. You're right. It's a blessing and a curse for these players to sign that long, those long deals for that high of AAV because you're putting yourself in a scenario where if things go down with the organization, it's going to be hard for you to get moved. Yeah, but I don't think he wanted that pressure to where if he signed a short-term deal, then he would have had to perform and or else he would get paid less than what he could have been you know, paid already. So. It's it's really a lose lose in both perspectives. It's either the pressure is you know on you as a player to perform, or you take all of that off, but then you run the risk of you know being stuck with a bad team for the rest of your career. But you know there's a risk, there's a price with everything, as they say. Yep. Um, how I feel about the lingering injury is it's unfortunate, but it seems like he's actually okay and he'll be, he'll be back fine sometime soon. I wouldn't be shocked knowing him if he's back on Wednesday. I really wouldn't be shocked. He'll be fine. He'll be healthy soon. And, you know, he's a tough, you know what? So, and he's been in worse situations. I mean, this is, this is definitely a bad injury, but he, this, he's had worse injuries and I have no concern with, him coming back uh fairly soon so uh, yeah i'm not worried i agree with you panthers got swept last year thinking they could run and gun against tampa which is exactly why new no. jersey and Jersey's people gonna- aren't talking about enough how andrew brunette's like orchestrating that offense there so and we saw what happened with the panthers again regular season performance does not translate to the playoffs yeah, because you play a certain team, like a let's say, you know, well, obviously you have different opponents, but then you can probably like the Devils could sneak a win against us, and then they go play three bad teams, and then they get three easy points there. But it's a, it's a obviously different to play a you know a team in a seven game series consistently rather than play them there once, play them there another time. You know what I mean? So. Because you're not seeing them consistently, so it's a different, uh, it's a different, different animal. animal. Yeah. Last year in the playoffs for the Rangers, who was the most disappointing? I'd still have to say Panarin, maybe. I yeah, I'd have to say Panarin. If he came up big too, like that Tampa series could have been wraps too. Yeah, you could also argue that cop was a little disappointing i thought he had a good series against pittsburgh after that he was kind of quiet after that it was like pretty much the kid line that took over after round one yeah yeah 100 percent. the whole Uh, well mika and Kreider also turned it up mika had a very good playoff performance yeah same cries for sure yeah but after round one it was more like the kid line that was the whole story I don't know what type of trades they're talking about with that, but Toronto's like overhauling their roster right now, pretty much. They're just doing so. their goal is not even the cup, it's just to get through round one. Yeah. They just want to break the curse. Well, to be fair, Dubis' uh, job is on the line, so. That too. Yeah, Dubis has a lot, That's that, a lot of pressure. pressure. Yeah, that's why he's doing anything in his power to get this team over the hump in terms of getting through round one or else he's gone. 
But then who do you replace him with, though, is the question. Peter Shirell. They might have someone within the organization they like. If not, Brandon they'll... Shatter. They'll just take over the team. We'll have to say. I'm at the airport. I missed the beginning. How was Miller's suspension? Uh, there... Or has uh, the Miller suspension pushed the trade past Wednesday? There is no suspension as of this moment, and I don't think it's going to push the push anything. You can also blame Brandon Shanahan for not, you know, picking the right people to really manage this team. You know what I mean? So technically, if Dubis loses his job as well, you know, because of Shanty or ownership, Shanty should lose his job as well. You yeah, know. he's been there longer. He's been there longer and he's been through quite a few guys and none of them were able to get over the hump. So at that point, you kind of have to be like, it's the owner or the, or the president, right? He's the president. So that is not doing the best job of hiring the right guys to manage this organization. But then who do you bring in after that? I don't know. I don't trust the Islanders either come playoff time without trots and the they're going to have to over rely on Sorokin to yeah. win them a seven game series, which, you know, it's possible. We saw Igor stand on his head last year in the playoffs, but I, I don't know if in Carolina or Boston, potentially, I don't see it happening. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think they're going to beat a team like that. I don't think, dude, and even the last time the Islanders faced Carolina um, in 2019, they got swept with trots. So, and the team now is worse, our group, right? Worse or probably a little bit better. The Islanders? Yeah, from since the 2019. I don't know. It's tough because they started yeah, out with at Horvat. I don't know. I mean, who they really got? Horvat and I don't know, but I'd say Carolina is better than they were that Carolina was then. Regardless, Carolina is a better team, and um, yeah, so like they couldn't do it with Trots, then they're not gonna, you know, probably do it Lane Lambert. Especially, it's probably gonna be a battle towards the end to try to get in the wild card. So like. Yeah, I can't imagine players are going to get rest on the Islanders. They're probably going to, and if they want to make the playoffs, they're going to, you know, have to play till the end. And then on top of that, and then you got to play playoff games as opposed to some of the top teams um, that probably have a playoff spot locked. They'll be able to rest some guys up before game one. But for, you know, the Islanders, I just don't see it happening. And then you got to rely on Sorokin and, I don't. I just don't see Rod Brindamore letting his team lose to the Islanders. That would be embarrassing, especially if you know you're Jim Montgomery and the Bruins. If they play the Islanders, I don't see them losing to the Islanders. That would just be that would be a tough way to end your season. You know, losing round one to the Islanders, no way. But even I then, think they're going to play Boston and not Carolina either way. I don't yeah. think they're going to maintain that first wild card spot. I think someone's going to pass them with the amount of games in hand. There's a potential. Well, there's potential that the Islanders miss the playoffs too. I was about to say. So, I mean, it's not guaranteed they're going to make it, but we'll see. I think they end up playing Boston. Yeah. Exactly. If they do make it, and it's over from there, I don't see them. I don't see anything happening. No. Uh yeah, we'll probably go seven games. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna say six games for the Rangers. I hope. If we really only just because of that running gun style, like you said, with the Devils, it's just I don't think it's gonna work out well for them. And it, it could honestly be as quick as potentially five games. Uh, it's probably that's more of a reach, but it's a possibility if things really go the Rangers' way and they play the right way and don't cheat the game like the Devils. We all know that who will cheat the game. So. Yeah, and they're and you know they're undersized too as a team, so I just don't see it working out for them. Six games for the Rangers, I'd say it's wraps. I've had enough of Devils fans on Twitter. Yes, Rangers will play the Devils. It will go seven games this time. It's not going to be Matto. It's on overtime. It's going to be Kane, Kane, Kane. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, but this is in round one, but hey, we'll take Especially it. Especially with all the Devil fans right now on Twitter. There are so many Devil fans talking shit, saying that 
Patrick Kane's wash, that Patrick Kane's no good anymore and all of that garbage. I can't wait for him to prove them wrong, and I can't wait for him to just explode against New Jersey and just shut their stupid faces. Bro, Jersey fans have no right to talk smack when they were they had such a big lead in the whole lead in you know early on in the season, and now us, the Rangers, who had a slow start, we are within striking distance to passing them in the standings. So what makes them think that, you know, they're going to do all of this, you know, jazz and just go on to the Stanley Cup and win it, right? Like, I just don't see it happening. You know, you had such a big lean and you blew it. And now you're in second place? Come on. In your own Interesting uh, news that came out. Canucks beat writer saying that they're opening up space for uh, – for Kane, which would mean they're going to be the third team involved, obviously not the, not like they're um, getting Kane. Yeah, obviously. So there it is. So Kane Canucks are the third team, probably at least. Yeah, especially if you trade Kratzov. That's their like, you know, that's their gift to retaining salary to help us out. We gotta do uh, playoff predictions though. I, I it's gonna be so cringe to see that everyone pick the Devils over the Rangers. It's gonna be so cringe. I hope that it happens because I want them to be look. I want them to look like idiots. I loved last year how many fans picked uh, Pittsburgh, which you could argue Pittsburgh maybe should have won the series, but yeah, but that's like Pittsburgh. Like Devils, are, Devils are not Pittsburgh though. Like a true, too, like. Pittsburgh is understandable just because they had more experience. You know, you had Crosby, you had Malkin. Like, Devils, okay, Hughes, he sure, but like, they're so young. They're not, even, they don't compare to Panarin. They don't compare to, you know, Patrick Kane, you know, so I have no concerns there. I don't want to hear it. The Adam Fox is better than Dougie Hamilton. I don't even know why that's a debate. I, I do not care. I don't know why devil fans are trying to make a debate out of it just to make themselves feel better, I guess. But yeah, but Hey, I mean, uh, Gabe, I hope so. <laughs> Cause I'm tired of it. Yeah. Schneider definitely, uh, respectable that he, uh, was willing to do all that here, but I'm sure he understands that Patrick Kane makes his team a lot better. So yeah. That's why I'm sure he has no problem. He probably just said, yeah, screw it. Let's just win this damn cup. I I haven't seen anything about this, Luca, and I doubt that's true. That would make zero sense for St. Louis to get Nick Benino. They're sellers. <laughs> Besides Kane being an obvious example, but I feel like every player loves playing in the garden and would love to play for the Rangers. World's most famous arena for a reason. I do not care about the arena in the NHL. I do not. I'm biased, but it's the world's most famous arena. It's sick to play in that garden. I don't care. Like, who wouldn't want to play in MSG? And I may sound biased too with it. Like, when I go to other NHL arenas, they just don't have this feel that the garden does. Like, the same vibe. Yeah. Like, the garden just feels like it feels like you're in a different world when you're at the garden. Yeah, when I'm at other arenas, yeah, it just yourself. feels like it just feels like it's what it is. Yeah. It's like you have to pinch yourself. Friends, I've only been to two arena other arenas, but still, when I went to those two other arenas, which is UBS and Key Bank Center, they didn't feel have that feel that the garden has. Yeah, garden's definitely magical, a lot of history for sure. That's part of it. But yeah, like I said, you just like every time you enter that arena, you just have to pinch yourself. Like, you can't believe that you're there, you know? It's wild. If the Chase Bridge wasn't there, I'd be pinching myself more looking at the ceiling. But, you know. James Dolan, you know. Not for nothing, opposing teams are going to have to play a full solid 60 to beat us after Wednesday. We are going to be stacked 100%. Yeah. Sir Steven or Stefan, however you pronounce your name, but yeah, no, for sure. Not sure the Islanders make the playoffs. They only have 19 games left. Fewest in hockey, only two points up on Pittsburgh and uh, four 
and the Penguins have four games in hand. I agree with you. I think that it's going to be a, a very tough uphill battle. They'd have to, if they keep winning though, the way that they have lately, I think it's going to be tough to imagine them miss the playoffs, but for their sake, uh, well, for our sake, I hope they hit into a slump and they don't make it, but uh, for their sake, you know, of course they can't get cold soon. Otherwise they're in big trouble. Yeah, for sure. Oh, no. I think we will lose to the Devils, unfortunately, unless we get physical with them. Truba needs to uh, put in a shift. I um, I disagree there. I think that I think that the Rangers are the more physical team. Yeah, sure. and they're a bigger team too. Which and size, obviously, you need if you're going to win a Stanley Cup. You need size. Devils don't really have that. To be honest with you, I can't stress enough how much like how important it is to have like to have size on your team. Like I cannot stress enough. Like you need guys that are going to grind down the opposition. You know what I mean? Especially in the bottom six, dude. Like, how do you think LA, the LA Kings won their cups? Like size and defense, you know, they just pesky grinded you down. Like there's just, it was just unreal, you know, but yeah, you need size. There's no doubt about it. Size and grit is definitely a must. If you're going to win a Stanley cup, which the Rangers have enough of before everyone in the chat starts being like, Oh, so you're agreeing. Yeah, there needs to be some grit on the team. I never denied that, but it shouldn't be all grit because if you start filling out with too much grit, you're then slow. you're going to have no skill on the team at all. And yeah, you're a slow team. I think home ice either way is yeah. overrated considering what Tampa has done the past two years as having no, uh, they didn't have home ice at all the past two years. In their series, so I think it's overrated. Yeah, I want to see Buffalo in the playoffs too. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be hype. They definitely deserve it. That's like another thing. Like Buffalo, low key, could be a sneaky team if they like get passed around on. I'm not gonna lie. Y'all saying the Devils only play run and gun? Haven't seen many games with them. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. See, come playoff time. And that's just not true. We watched the Rangers play the Devils. We yeah, saw it true. happen. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know exactly what you're talking about there, but... <laughs> but sure. <laughs> I don't think the Hawks want Zach Jones. I'm guessing you guys are going to get Kane for a draft pick, and that's it. Uh, I think there will be one prospect in there. I don't know who, but there will be a prospect. Brett Berard, maybe, is a name that's been thrown around. We'll see, though. Yeah, hopefully. It's reminding me exactly of us, how us Ranger fans behaved when we were so cocky thinking we'd beat Carolina. That's what Devil fans are reminding just, me of right now. Yeah, just because we swept them in a the regular season. I mean, we kind of – we swept Tampa in the regular season. We still lost to them. Yeah. Like, doesn't even matter. Devil's GM on NHL Live saying that he's hammering out a contract with Brett right now. That doesn't shock me, which – that's what they should be doing. They should be extending a guy like Brett. Oh, I'd cry tears of joy if that happened, but sadly, I don't think that's going to happen. If it did. Oh, my God. No mercy to the devil fans. That's a fact. The Debbie chance would be generational. 100%. With the way go on, liking players that work hard with not much skill, I suspect Lockwood 
uh, to play more games than Kravtsov did as a Ranger, either this season or next season. I think that would be a next season thing. Um, to ease your worries about the defense, look at what they did last night. And look at what they did towards the end of the year last year and carrying it into the playoffs last also, year. Also, I don't know if you uh, saw the post-game press conference from last night, but Gallant was talking about how they wanted that extra man back after the last few nights with so, giving up so many odd-man rushes. He mentioned we we like we would like to have that extra guy back, meaning like at least three guys back. So, yeah, I wouldn't have to – I wouldn't worry if I were you. We're, we're going to probably take – better uh, care of our defense now we're going to focus on it more and we're going to be a defensively responsible team from here on out or at least I, we should expect to be especially from what we saw last night and uh, from what uh, the coach uh, had to say in this uh, post-game press so um, yeah I wouldn't worry at all and that's the other thing too about New Jersey we have not seen the Devils and Rangers play with the way that the Rangers are going to play come playoff time. We just haven't seen it this year. So when was the last time we played Devils? What'd you say? When was the last time we played the, the Devils? January. We play them March 30th. That game yeah. will tell me, tell us more. Yeah. Unless, of course, at that point, the Rangers are starting to sit players for uh, load management reasons. I don't think we'll sit many, I think. Let me see the, let me see the schedule. Where, no, we won't sit. We'll we'll play our guys. We because we have um, we have like six games in April. So I think by April, maybe like our first game in April, or even the as soon as the Buffalo game. But I think we would want to have our guys there against Jersey just because it's a big divisional game. You know what I mean? That'll kind of set the tone for the playoffs. Maybe that's just me though. Could be totally wrong. So don't clown me in the chat. I'm just a fan. But that's what I think they may do or they should do. I don't, that's just me. Uh, I don't think this is a problem considering New Jersey is actually worse on home ice this and year. There's no guarantees that Devils will have the home ice home ice advantage. There's still time for the Rangers to take that second place spot. You know what I mean? They're st within striking distance. It only takes a you know just a couple losses for the Devils, and it takes a couple wins in a row for the Rangers to make up their ground and to take that uh, number two spot in the Metro and, you know, which would be huge for sure, but there's still time. I wouldn't say Devils for sure have home ice yet. There's still time for the Rangers to get a, you know, string a few wins together, especially with the, I uh, except for Boston, but if you could be Boston, they'll be huge, but you got Philly should be win. Ottawa should be win. Boston, you know, if you could steal the win there, great, because then you have Montreal and Buffalo. Buffalo's a solid team, but you, if you, you know, you should be winning those games. You know, Pittsburgh, damn, we play Pittsburgh, Washington, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, and then Nashville. Huh? So we definitely could string a couple wins here uh, together for sure, but. Came with slot in on power play one, probably with Zabanajag, Kreider, Panarin, and Fox. It makes me upset because if Igor was on his game in the Pittsburgh series, it wouldn't have ended in seven. We would have more energy in the Carolina and Tampa series. There was a lot of what ifs with that series, to be honest with you. So I don't know. Yeah, and this is what matters come down the stretch here. We got to see it, and if they keep proving it like they did last year, I have full confidence in this team going on another run. You just take care of business defensively. You play that hard-nosed fucking hockey against the Devils. They're not going to have a shot. Their their offense ain't going to do jack, and they rely heavily on their offense to win them their, their games because, you know, that's 
that's their game. They like to fill the net up, and you take that away from them, what are they? What's their identity as a team, right? And their goalie isn't, like, anything crazy. They're not – he's not – I don't care. Like, he's not going to be, like, the guy that's going to, you know, take a team and to a deep run, to a conference final run at least, right? Like, it's possible, but I just don't see it happening. Um, but yeah, you take, you shut down the devil's offense. They're going to get frustrated. They're not going to know what to do. Their inexperience is going to show us. Matter of fact, take dumb penalties. They're going to make dumb mistakes, you know, whether it's the neutral zone, turning the puck over and the Rangers are going to have this like as easy as cake because they're just not going to know what to do, how to counter it just solely because of the experience that they've got, they got from the last year's run. I'm not saying it'll be an easy series. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying if it does come to that point where the devils get frustrated and they get out of hand a little bit, they start taking down penalties. They, they're not themselves. They lose control just because, you know, their offense can't get it together in, in the playoffs just because the Rangers defense and goaltending is going to be that good. And, you know, their inexperience shows that the Rangers are going to know what to do. And they're going to capitalize and take advantage. No problem. Panarin, Kane, Zabanajad, Kreider. Then they're done that, you know, like it's it's just going to be easy from there on that there on out. So you you take care of the business defensively. I we, This is why I said potentially game could series can end in five, potentially. But I think the Rangers are going to have it in six. That'll be my prediction, like I said. But you take you do that. It's you're, you're in good hands. And then Igor on top of that, like I said, just turns it up. You know, no problem. We know what Igor is capable of. He'll get it. No problem. Yep, 100%. Imagine Buffalo sweeping Boston like Columbus sweeping Tampa in 2019. I don't think that's going to happen, but that would be absolutely East, wild if it did. The East would be pretty wide open at that point. I mean, because oh, Buffalo, yeah. oh, not Buffalo, Boston's like the one team everyone everyone in the East is like, oh, if we're going to make it to the cup, we have to give, go through them. Boston goes, East is pretty wide open. Sorry that I'm going to skip some comments. I just need to get ahead. Recomment what you did before if you want me to address a certain comment. Wait, say that again? No, I was just talking to the chat that um, oh. and telling them to re-put their comments in since I'm going to, if they had anything they wanted me to address since I'm jumping ahead. Um, this is another comment right here. Rangers, Devils, home ice don't matter much. There are just as many Ranger fans at Devil Land. Like, that's another thing. Like we're going to have sh- half of the building at Prudential is going to be Ranger fans. And then in the garden, there are going to be barely any devil fans. So the Rangers are going to have fans no matter where they go. And then that's huge, obviously in the playoffs, but you know, I, I just, the Rangers, if they're going to lose the series, it's, you know, they're going to have to beat themselves. No way you're going to lose to the an inexperienced devils team. I'm sorry. It's just, it can't happen. You're too good. You're too good to let that happen. After coming off a conference final run, come on. Come on. Can't happen. Yep. So if they're going to lose that series, it's not because the Devils are the better team. It's not because they're necessarily just going to play a better game. It's more has to do – if they do play a better game, it's not because they're the better team like or they had that more skill. We have more skill, obviously, and that's a fact. It's just because we're going to beat ourselves. You know, we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot. That's the only way we lose to the Devils. And as long as we don't do that, we'll be in good hands. I agree with this comment, too. We had multiple goal leads in both losses versus the Devils. If we play defense like I know we can, we'll be all right. Exactly, John. And I know that the Devils had a 3-1 to lead in the game they lost against us, but I trust the Rangers to be better defensively and be able to tighten their game up defensively more than I trust the Devils with a lead. So it's a matter of getting ahead early in those games. And once you get ahead, you lock it down defensively and you're in the driver's seat there. As long as you play like you did defensively last night, there's no doubt in my mind they can handle business in this series. And that's the key to that series, specifically for the Rangers get ahead. And, and lock it down defensively, like you said. I and mean, you don't want to play, be playing catch-up with these guys because what's going to happen, you keep playing catch-up, you're going to find yourself in 4-4, 5-5 games, 6-6, and all of a sudden it's going to be 50 to 52 shots on goal. 
from both sides after two or th- or maybe heading into overtime after three periods. You don't want to be into that. And you don't want to get into those games. They're going to try to drag you into those games. You get ahead early. You lock it down defensively. You frustrate them. You're pesky. You're hard nose. You're you're good to know, you're good to go. Just be stiff out there. You got to be stiff defensively. Devils have no shot. There's, exactly. too many, there's too many reasons for the Rangers to, you know, there's too many reasons for the Rangers not to like to win the series, right? Like, it just makes every sense in the world. Like, there's barely like the only way the Devils win is just if the Rangers don't play their game. If Gallant, it's really all on Gallant to get this team prepared to go out and get ahead early in these games and to lock it down defensively. If yeah. he doesn't have the guys prepared then sure, the Rangers lose the series. The Rangers, like you keep saying, only lose the series if they beat themselves. Play a full 60. Play a full 60. Get out. Get ahead early. You have you have one of the best goalies in the world in that. And play lock it down defensively. That, the Devils, their, their identity is their offense. You take away their identity, they have no team. As a matter of fact, if they just never had the offense that they had now, they're not in the playoffs. Maybe in a wild card spot. But even then... Take away what they're known for. You have it. You're in the drive. If you trap against a team like New Jersey, you're going to win that series. Seriously. It's not even about who's playing like, like Jersey's going to come at you. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're going to come at you offensively. So if you just frustrate them, you force those turnovers in the neutral zone, you create those on man rushes the other way. Scoring chances are going to be coming left and right for the Rangers while the devils are not going to get much. 100%. And you have the right guys to help you capitalize on those opportunities up front, Mm -hmm. especially when you add Patrick Kane. So Patrick Kane is the ice is the cherry on top. Like, come on. He's Showtime. He's named nicknamed Showtime for a reason. Why is he named nicknamed Showtime? Because he comes comes up big in the playoffs, especially when it matters deep in the, you know, in deep in deep in the rounds, third conference final or Stanley Cup scoring them big goals, you know, to help his team, you know, win championships, three cups on his resume wasn't even a, they weren't flukes. They were legit, you know, and he was a big part of those uh, Stanley cups for sure. Exactly. Tony. Exactly. It's a different animal and it's, we'll see if they're ready for it, but based on what we've seen before, I trust the Rangers more than the devils to make in-game adjustments if they have to. Based on what we've seen, you know, with one team having the experience, the other not. Yeah, it's I can see that honestly, I could see the young players and that was just folding just because of the pressure. Honestly, the pressure may be too much. Um, you know, the intensity of the game may be too much. The fact that they have to play in tight games now may be too much for them to handle. The physicality may be too much for them to handle. I don't see a reason why the Devils should win the series. I don't. And I, you can call me a biased Ranger fan, but as we're talking, it just makes too much sense. It, it, this is the Rangers series. They have to win that. Not, not only because it's a, a rivalry matchup, but they have the better team. They have the ex, more experience, a lot more experience. You know, and now you add Patrick Kane, three-time Stanley Cup champion, right? Well, how many cups is that combined in on the Rangers? You have... Kane, you have Barkley Goudreau. And then Tarasenko. And Tarasenko. That's five cups on your team. Five Stanley Cups. So, no excuse. Yep. No excuse. And, yeah, uh, I agree that this is the Rangers series to lose here. Yeah, I was just about to say, it's their series to lose. If they lose, it's on them. It's not because the Devils were the better. It was because it's the Rangers. They messed it up. Yeah, exactly. Especially with the roster that you have on paper, which yes, on paper isn't everything, but it is so hard to mess this up with this roster that you got to win it. You got to win that series. Mm -hmm. Even after the Devils adding Timo Meyer. I don't care. I don't care if they add Timo Meyer. They're going to play the same style. They're going to try to get away with it. I do not care. You can't tell me Lindy Ruff is going to come into the playoffs with the Devils team and just say, yeah, lock it down defensively. He's never been known for that. He's always been a coach where their defense has never been great. Same with the Dallas Stars. Their defense was never great. It just never was. He's not a coach to 
coach good defensive teams. It just it just doesn't you know it, no it's not happening. I don't see it happening. Yep. I don't know if you're hinting at this point being like beneficial for the Devils or the Rangers, but if you're pointing at being beneficial for the Devils, sure, anything could happen. They're going in with house money. But again, like last year, Pittsburgh, they kind of beat themselves in that series. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh kind of beat themselves in that series. They choked two goal leads in games five and six, and then they had a lead in game seven, which they choked as well. They lost that series themselves. It's not like the Rangers were the better team. They beat themselves in that series. The same thing could happen here with the uh, with the Rangers. It would be them being themselves, not the Devils being the better team. I can't see it going that way. No, I can't either. The Rangers are too good to lose the series. Any Devil fan can get on this call and argue with me right now. They're, they'll be wrong. They'd be wrong to even say the Devils would win that series. I do not care. It's not even a. It's not even a question. Not even a question. Mikola needs to get his shit together. He's definitely hurting the team more than helping. I disagree. I thought Mikola has been fine. Every now and then he'll take a dumb penalty, but the penalty that he's taking, he's gonna get away with come playoff time. You got a guy like that because of the fact that come the playoffs, he's the yeah, type of guy yeah. that you want on your team. The playoff in the playoffs, the refs aren't gonna call everything. Unfortunately, like they're they're gonna there may be some penalties that are taken that are not gonna be called just because the refs don't want to be the reason a series goes a certain way. They want to be they just want the players to play. Unless if it's a blatant obvious call, they'll call it. Other than that, it's it's gonna be like free hockey in a way. Exactly. Yeah. Which is how, and we learned. Which is that. another reason why I, like, I don't know if the Devils can handle that type of thing because the Rangers are gonna yeah. wear and tear them down. They're gonna they're gonna get frustrated just because you know Hughes is gonna get you know cross checked maybe from behind. Probably not even. Gonna, it probably isn't even that bad of a cross check, but you know since he's undersized, he's gonna flop. You know, and he's gonna complain to the ref, and that's the last thing the refs need to hear is someone bitching in their ear, you know, the whole time. And not just him, he's here. Yes, for Brad, even. It makes me also wonder, let me check what the Devils' power play looks like this year, what their percentage is at. Oh, because and that's another thing. If the Rangers' power play can just get back to what it was before, it's, it's no, it's over then. New Jersey's 19th on the power play. Interesting. And, yeah, once they add Kane to that power play. Oh, yeah. I mean, come on. It's, you can't tell me the Devils are winning. You can't. You cannot. You just simply cannot tell me why the Devils win that series. You can't. It's Unless, again, the Rangers beat themselves. Yeah. The easiest idea is obviously to, you know, aim for first place so we could just, like, you know, face a wild card team. And still possible. I mean, we're we are uh, nine points out of first. Just only takes a couple L's for the Hurricanes and a couple wins for the Rangers. But again, looking at second and third place, the Devils had the biggest lead in NHL, and now they're now we're battling for them in second place in the Metro. We have seventy-seven. They have eighty-three points. We're easily within striking distance. Sure, they have a game in hand, right? Yeah, they do. So, but even then, that's. You know, again, a couple L's for the Devils, a couple wins for the Rangers. You're, you, you know, you're going to compete for that second wild card. Or not wild card, just second place spot in the Metro. We'll see. But I think it's possible for that to happen. But, of course, I would love for the Rangers to um, just try to get first place, of course. But if not, then try to get home ice. But even then, home ice in the playoffs. Doesn't matter till like a game seven, right? Like that's a good point that Golant made last year. Like home ice doesn't really matter unless if it's really like a game seven, you know. And even then, the Rangers go in the Carolina and win that game five to two. Yeah, definitely having fans there helps. But even then, like game, like if we finish third and it's game seven, if we go to a game seven in Jersey, it's 
half of the building is going to be ranger van so i'm like i don't care i'm fine like we're fine <laughs> This is another good point here where that, that I yeah. wanted to touch on. If the Rangers, okay, say we are in the scenario where it becomes a battle in that series with the Rangers and Devils, they're both playing running gun hockey, and it just ends up being that type of series where it's high scoring every game. Yeah. How could you say that the Devils are favored in that matchup when the Rangers have, when he's at the top of his game, the best goalie in the National Hockey League? And not only that, they have. A top six consisting of Patrick Kane, Artemi Panarin, Vladimir Tarasenko, Vincent Trocek, Chris Kreider, Mika Zibanejad, and the kid line's going to provide secondary scoring. No. The Devils? Okay. They have Jack Hughes and Timo Meyer. That's cute and all. But <laughs> after that, the secondary scoring, sure, they have guys like Nico Heischer who could chip in here and there. Igor Sharangovich is a cute little name. But <laughs> realistically, I see the Rangers outmatching them in that. No? And they've... And the Rangers have proven even like even against Edmonton, they were down. They've been down four one plenty of times or three down by three goals, and they've come back and have won those games. On top of that, so they're ca- more than capable of, you know, filling the net up. It's just you don't want to run in. You don't want to play those kind of games. No, it's, of course. You know why? You know it's just too much at risk, and you know it's just not a comfortable way to play. If you just, you know, get out or get ahead early and just lock it down defensively, you'll be, you know, it's a, you cruise from there. And that's obviously the way you, you want to play, but, and you, you know, you provide little rest, little to none risk, you know, and playing that way. But um, yeah, but even then, you know, no matter the matchup or the, no matter the style they play, you know, it's the Rangers outmatch them on paper and should be on the ice as well. Yeah. I disagree with this. I think the Rangers know that they're a good team. I think they know it. I think they know what they're capable of. And I think the outside noise isn't distracting them because outside noise, they all say bullshit about the Rangers. That just isn't true. And they say that they're not a good team. But the Rangers, we saw last year, they used that as fuel to will them to the conference finals. Yeah, and not only that, but like we've seen the Rangers when their back is against the walls, they they come up big, right? Down three one against Pittsburgh, down two zero against Carolina, you know, and they just didn't give up. There really was no quit in New York there, but um, you know, when their back is against the walls, it just seems like they played their best hockey as well, and everyone's just at the top of their game. So hypothetically, we're down three two to the Devils, right? We're not we're not gonna let the Devils. Be, let, we're not going to let the Devils beat us, right? Then that would mean that Panarin, Kane, all Shesterkin, that would mean that all those players would be at the top of their game. And when they're at the top of their game, we know it's not even close. Honestly, this this series kind of reminds me. It is a little, little uh, weird comparison, but I, as a Yankee fan, I am a Yankee fan, but as a Yankee fan, this series reminds me of the Yankees and Guardian series. The Yang, you can, you're not, you're, Yankees weren't even, gonna, the Yankees were not letting the Guardians beat, beat them in that series, right? They, it just can't, couldn't happen. This series kind of reminds me of that. You cannot let an inexperienced Devils team beat you. It just can't happen. You're, you're the better team, and it just, you just can't let them, you, it can't happen. It would just be disgraceful. Period. End of story. It would be disgraceful. It's, also, I, I think that maybe you could compare this even to the 2012 series against the Devils, where that you you, yeah. you had to win that series. You I had, had to. It's not because it was a rivalry match unnecessarily. It was because you were the better team. So, you I guess you can just get revenge here. But even then, but this is first round compared to round. This is round one compared to what in 2012 is conference final. I'm still not over that series. I still think we had a chance to win it, but that's another conversation but anyways but yeah and like you cannot let the devils beat you in the series it's just it just can't happen it just this is just the team you can't let they're cocky they're arrogant you know and they're gonna walk into whether it's prudential game one or the garden thinking they, they have it in the bag i will as a fan i will not let this team i, I have no effect on what decision or how they play the Rangers, right? Because I'm just a fan at the end of the day. But if I was a coach or manager, I would not let Jack Hughes beat the New York Rangers. I will not let that, you know what, SOB 
beat us. It just can't happen. It can't happen. Agree. It would be disgraceful to let that, you know, what's walk all over us. Not happening. Cannot happen. And it's sad to think, too, that if they lose this series, instead of like people are going to be like, oh, the Devils are we're probably the better team. And nobody's going to talk about how like with Pittsburgh last year, oh, Pittsburgh should have won the series. It's going to be instead, oh, the Devils are just that good. Why are we not giving? And then to this comment, too, why are we not giving the Rangers credit? Why aren't we? Why are we saying the Devils are scary? Why can't we be up there, too? Why are we scared of a team that's inexperienced? Why are we scared of them when we're just as good, if not better, at times? In any sport, you have to learn the lo- uh, how to lose before you learn how to win. That happened to the Ranger, uh, Rangers season. They got a good amount of experience this year. Doubt Rangers lose against the Devils. Yes, Iceman. I'm with you. And I think that collectively as a fan base, we need to start appreciating this team more. And I think as a fan base, we need to start getting behind them and we need to actually show them support and show them that we feel that they're one of the best teams in the East, which is what they are. But some fans still are going out there and showing their doubts and everything. No. Show your confidence. Especially for this series. No reason to not show their your uh, confidence, especially as a fan. And uh, look at this, look at this uh, person right here. And when was the last time the Rangers won the cup? You guys are way too overconfident. This guy's probably a devil fan because he mentioned that uh, the devils are a better team as well. Well, sucks to be you, buddy. Good for you. That's your opinion, but it is what it is. Rangers are winning. And we're not being overconfident. We just believe in our team being yeah. that good. It's not being overconfident. It's just we've seen what the Rangers could do when they're at the top of their game. And when they're at the top of their game, there's no denying they're one of the best in the league. Yeah. It's that simple. And you're telling me that the Devils didn't overachieve this year? You think they performed? No, their expectations yeah. are underachieved? Get I'll sit back and wait for this response specifically. Tell me right now you had you thought the New Jersey Devils were going to be in second place in the Metro and make the playoffs. I'll wait. Yeah. As, a, as a top three team, maybe the wild card, I'll wait. I'll wait for your comment to come in. We'll give this guy a couple minutes because I'd love to hear what he has to say. Sorry to other comments, just re-comment whatever it is later. I need to address this next comment. I'll wait. Gladly okay. we'll wait. 100%. I will. Wait. If you want to call in, that'd be even better. You put the Drop the link as well. Drop the link. I will drop the link. If we I, have any I, Devil I fans that want to jump in here, I'd I love it. Right I want loose change right now. I can't wait. Doesn't surprise me that I I knew like sooner or later we were going to get a fan, a devil fan in particular. We're probably that's probably gonna you know come in here and say some crap like that or BS like that. Yep, blows my mind that you know a person like that, despite getting Patrick Kane, says we're still gonna lose to the Devils or the Devils are the better team. Oh, yeah, that like in the Devils obviously overachieved, and you're gonna tell me they're gonna replicate that in the playoffs. <laughs> you know that what is- the series reminds me a lot of? But it reminds me a lot of the Philadelphia Eagles against the Giants this past year, where Giant fans in particular, no offense, because I know a lot of people here are Giants fans. There were Giant fans that were confident that they were gonna win the series, which okay, or win the game, I should say, which yeah. okay. Fair, but the Eagles are the more experienced team and they know they've been there, done that before. And it's just what it is. When you haven't had much, like I'm a giant fan as well, but it's true. When you haven't had much, um, not experience, success, well, experience too, but success in the last few years, you don't know how to act. You don't know how to act when you win a playoff game or you're in the playoffs more specifically. Devil fans haven't really experienced much success with their team in a, a while, let's be honest. And um, 
Hold on for a sec. Yeah. And yeah, uh, to finish his point. Yeah, there. sorry. Okay. I, someone was knocking on my door. But um, no, Devil fans haven't experienced much success with their team. And, you know, they don't know how to act when not only they made the playoffs or make the playoffs, but they don't know how to act or they're not going to know how to act if they win a playoff game against us too. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of like the same situation with the Giants fans, right? Like, I'm a Giant fan too, but we made the playoffs first time since 2016 or 2017, whatever, when we lost to Green Bay. It's, it's been brutal season after brutal season after brutal season. We just – you know, couldn't, you know, and now we finally make it to the playoffs, beat the Vikings, and then we face the Eagles. We're overconfident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we're on a roll. And then we just run into a team that actually is better in every way and obviously more experienced. So, yeah, like the Mets last uh, year, too. <laughs> yeah, the Mets last year. Yeah. So 101 wins. Okay. It's good and all. They had a good regular season, but then come playoff time, they played a Padres team that has been in the playoffs before and knows what it's like. And again, I keep going back to, to the perfect example, which was us against Carolina when us Ranger fans were overconfident and arrogant. And we said that we were going to beat Carolina in three in that series there. But yeah. yeah just cause we swapped them. Exactly. I'll be right back. Give me one second. All right. We're better than the Devils. I know. I know. But Hughes and Meyer. Okay. But Zabanajad. But Kreider. But Kane. But Panarin. Trocek. Tarasenko. Also, they may have the better number one overall pick. But our number one overall pick... When he's hot, is no slouch either. And yeah, he pro he ran away. Color me, I'm shocked. And I'm sorry to the Devil fans that I actually have respect for that watch my shows and everything. I... I'm sorry that I sound like an asshole right now, but in reality, this is just the scenario that it is. So we have a lot of uh, devil fans that come into the show, are respectful, are great. And listen, if the series goes the other way, I'll be the first to admit I was wrong. But I'm telling you right now that I have full confidence in my team here. You guys are lost. Devils are a better run franchise and a better track record. That's a fact. And you didn't even get Kane yet. Fact. Well, I mean, for your Patrick Kane point, that if you've been looking at the reports and paying attention, the, the deal's done. They're just waiting for the cap space. But I don't know what to tell you there. But to get on Twitter, if you're not already, that, that's really about it. Which, by the way, some of you in chat are not following me on Twitter. Go follow me on Twitter. But uh, what does organizational track record have to do with this series? Because last I checked, if I'm not mistaken, the New Jersey Devils haven't won a cup since the early 2000s, which, yeah, it's been the 90s for the Rangers. But it's not like it's been recent for the Devils either. So I don't know if you could really bring up track record in this argument to begin with when again it has it, either way it has nothing to do with this year's playoff series the track record what happened in the early 2000s what happened in the 90s what's happened any time before now has zero impact on the series the only thing that matters is the fact that the rangers made the eastern conference finals last year which does matter because it's actually recent and that they have the experience so
I'm a Pittsburgh fan, and I'll be the first to admit the Rangers are loaded. Well, yeah. But there's some people out there that still, for whatever reason, want to act like the Rangers aren't good enough. Devils were king in the trap era, boring hockey. Boring hockey, but they won. And you know what? If they were trapping and they were playing that type of defensive hockey, I'd have less confidence in the series. But that's not how they play. That's why the track record does not matter. You haven't anything uh, yet. Hello, Devils will get the best of the Rangers you watch. All right. Well, here. Here's what will happen, uh, Loose Change. You're going to sub to the channel, and we're going to see what happens in the playoff series. If I'm wrong, I will come on here and be the first to admit that I was wrong because I'm not going to run away and hide from my feelings. But I want you, if the Rangers win the series, to come back and have the same respect factor that I'm going to have because I'm not going to run away and hide if... It's the other way around. I expect you to be here on the channel and you to come back and say, hey, I messed up. Exactly. And this is the other thing being taken out of context here. I never said the Devils were a bad team. I never said that. I just have said that I don't believe, based on my eyes from watching the game, that they are playoff ready. That's just my observation. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But it's just what I've seen. So, again. Why can't this Devils fan admit that both teams are stacked even without Kane Devils? are doing what the Rangers did last year, but the Rangers are a better team than Pittsburgh. I don't know if I agree with that. I think that Pittsburgh, like I said, shot themselves in the foot in that series. And that's what I feel it's going to take for the Rangers to do in this series to mess this up is shoot themselves in the foot. What did I miss? Um, all you missed was uh, two moronic comments. Um, Free uh, prime advertisement, guys. Just saying. <laughs> Had to put that out there. I did not leave. Okay, here we go. You guys are lost. That was our better run. F better track. And that's. And why you didn't get Kane yet. Okay. <laughs> and my point to this, what, what I said to this is because I still would love an answer to this in the chat from uh from loose oh, change devil fans being devil fans. I, I still am waiting for loose change to address what I asked him. What does track record have to do with with this year's team? I, I'm still waiting for it. This kid sounds like he's 15 years old, so take him with a grain of salt. But, oh, my God. Jesus. Not even 15. Honestly, it sounds like he's a 13, 12, 12 13-year-old. It is what it is. Yeah, but like you said, what does a better track record have anything to do with the series? Yeah, uh, it's just it's just funny to me. I mean, your track record the last few years has been dog shit, and that's a fact. I mean, you've made the play since, I don't know, since um, 2013 pretty much, right? You made the playoffs once, 2018. And you're telling me you had a better, okay. Exactly. Again, both teams are good. It's just I believe personally because I'm confident in my team that my team has the edge in the series. And because I've seen what they could do at the top of their game. We got Tony calling in, though. Tony, what's going on? How are you doing today? What's up, buddy? I'm becoming a regular. Third day yeah. in a row I'm calling in on you guys. Listen, up. so so the thing that pisses me off so bad about, about the um, these Devils fans is and, – and, again, they are a good team, obviously. But – yeah. You look at Jack Hughes. Jack Hughes didn't like the world on fire his first few years in the league. I mean, I know he had some injuries, very talented player, obviously. 
this is his breakout year. Don't let anybody lead you to believe that this is not his breakout year. Laffy, if we're just going to put them up against one another, Laffy came in on a COVID year. They played 50 games, no fans, no nothing. It was it was an abbreviated season. He didn't have the same training, didn't have the same workout schedule. They played a game every other day. It was extremely difficult in a rookie season. Came through it all okay. Last year, he put up 30 points. This year, he's uh, 31 points. This year, he's already at 30 points, or just about 30 points. He consistently gets better. So, mm-hmm. in my opinion, we are on schedule as far as Laffy is concerned. But yeah. to your point, let the Devils get in there and 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 go through what we went through last year, where almost nobody on our team had any playoff experience. And then we we have basically the same core of our team in there now this year that went through it, a, a, a Eastern Conference Finals run, and, and let them go through what we went through before they can start talking about them being the favorite. Because I don't want to hear nothing about that. I'm not saying they can't win. We all know that it's hockey. You put a seven-game series out there, it could happen. But, exactly. but you can't. You cannot be overconfident that they're going to beat the Rangers because they haven't gone through it yet. Nobody on that team, even Meyer. Is Meyer some like lights-out playoff player that I don't know about? I follow hockey pretty close. I don't think he's like some kind of playoff stud. Um, so, again, good luck to them. But I'm confident that we're going to have a nice little run here when we get Kane and everything settles down after this deadline. Uh, and, and I think that we're going to charge into the playoffs. I feel really good about it. Yes, sir. Yep, completely so. agree with that. And uh, thank you for yep. calling in, Tony. We you appreciate got it. it. Talk- All right, to finish Tony's point there, though, yeah, I, I agree with like everything that he said is completely accurate. And these devil fans shouldn't be overconfident. He's exactly right about that. And not only that, but I agree with it. Outside of his point about uh, Lafreniere, which, you know, that that's right. definitely something that's a t- touchy subject there. We still have to see Lafreniere break out more. Well, Lafreniere but, also came in on a contending team. Well, not contending, really. I mean, kind of. Definitely a better team than Devils when Hughes uh, came in, would you say? Probably. Yeah. So. So. And better, there's. Oh, God. Sorry, I'll, I was uh, just going to say that I agree with Tony that there's also no reason that the Rangers aren't the favorites in the series. And as a Devils fan, I don't know how you could deny that. Us Ranger fans could. Very well admit, Pittsburgh was definitely the favorite last year in that series. Uh, am I wrong there? No, they definitely uh, were. Yeah, Pittsburgh should have handled that series. They should have. Yeah. But now we're on the side that Pittsburgh was last year, and the Devils are on the side we were on. This guy said loose change this year. Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> doesn't mean that's the same thing with the devils. You just because just they got Timo Meyer doesn't mean he's going to that you're it's the same thing, but you're, you're acting as if everything's going to work out for the devils, but not really for us or any other team. So technically then the devils win the Stanley cup. That's basically your logic. The way you think the sooner you realize the better off you'll be. It's okay. Uh, for apparently on NHL network, at least people were saying in chat, I'm not too sure. Cause I haven't tuned in the NHL network, but from what people in chat were saying, they were saying that there's a chance that, uh, it gets done tomorrow according to NHL network. And then Avery, who's been on this for a while, uh, he's thinks that this is going to be done tomorrow as well. But again, remains to be seen. It's happening tomorrow or Wednesday though. And it's, it's cute though, that loose change also, is saying that it didn't happen. It sounds like someone's scared that Patrick Kane's going to the Rangers, does it? Oh, not? that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. It sounds yeah. like someone's scared. I, I could true. be wrong, but that's true. what it sounds like to me, at least. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe he's actually not confident going into this year, especially getting Kane. Yeah. And now he's just putting his anger and frustration that we are getting Kane on us because he knows what could potentially come and i mean if you're i mean if i was a devil fan i'd be tight as hell too just no doubt but sorry sorry about that <laughs> i i'll take four stanley cups too over timo meyer especially with how much they gave up for timo meyer 
I'd oh, rather my team oh, be hey. well-rounded than Barclay get... Pedro. You missed Barkley Goodrow too, right? No, I was just saying of these names that he listed. Oh, yeah, four. And then Goodrow would be... Well, yeah, it would be Patty Kane, six. three. Tarasenko, one, four, five. Yeah, six. No, Goodrow won two, right? Was it two? Yeah, so Tarasenko with one, Kane with three, Goodrow two, six. Okay. Yeah, sorry, I failed math. <laughs> it's okay i struggle to tell <laughs> but what i don't struggle with is using my eyes when i watch the game of hockey yeah and acknowledge certain situations let, let me ask you this loose change if you're still in the chat Who's the favorite in this series? The Carolina Hurricanes or the Buffalo Sabres? Because mm. I doubt your answer is the Buffalo Sabres. I, I'd i be shocked if your answer is the Buffalo Sabres. The Devils will blow by the Rangers. They're much faster and have a deeper core. Yes, I'll admit Igor's better, but we have defense and offense covered. Right. Okay. I'm if you that. think you're just going to walk, it's one thing to think you're going to win the series in six or seven as Devil fans, but if you think this uh, is going to happen, I don't know what to tell you if you think they're going to walk, cakewalk by the Rangers. I and, really don't know what to tell you. And that goes to my point when to you know, relating to giant fans or devil devil fans too. You haven't, when you haven't experienced much success in the last few years, you made since 2013, you make the playoffs one time in that span. Yeah. You're going to get excited for when your team is finally back in it again. And you're not going to know how to act kind of like the Knicks fans after they beat the Hawks in game two, Knicks and five chance wound up being Hawks and five. So that's fine. I mean, let them be, they are excited rightfully so, but I'm going to disagree with that. And he says, we in the present. Yeah. Yeah, I know. The Rangers still are the better team. I don't care. <laughs> they heard the better team. Here's deadly. Um, so is the guy on my, on the Jersey behind me. So is. And his, and his friend, his yeah. friend, Panarin. So is <laughs> the, other guy they acquired in Tarasenko. So, yeah. for as deadly as Hughes is, there's guys too that are. Oh, he's going to deadly. the standings talk. You guys had the biggest lead in in the in the whole freaking league at one point, and now we're, you're we're, you and the Devils and Rangers are competing for second place in the Metropolitan. Don't even you don't even go to the standings. You guys had every opportunity to get first to win the President's Trophy or at least win the East, and now you're in competing for second place with the Rangers. I mean, just let that sink in. Okay, fair, fair. But let's go to the Western Conference then. Who's winning the series if it ends up being Dallas and uh, Seattle? Who's win Or even if it's Vegas and Seattle as it stands, who's winning the series? The more experienced team, right? Oh my God! And Seattle's oh, a good team. He he misspelled Timo Meyer, so that that should just say a lot too. But yeah, now Patrick Kane is a is a human being as well in this world. Uh, I hate to I hate to break it to you, he does exist. Mikey, we're we're choosing not to ignore them because we just want to hear what they have to say because it's quality entertainment to me to hear all this. And again, it's just going to be funny to me when. Because I know what's going to happen, right, Mikey? We, we all know what's going to happen. It's all these devil fans right now in chat that are talking shit are not going to come back. when If the Rangers end up winning that series against the Devils, they're not going to come back. Oh, but if it's the other way around, oh. I'll have to come on. I'll be the big man and come on this microphone, admit I was wrong, and I'll have to take the heat for it. And I'm more than okay with taking the heat if the Rangers lose the series. Oh, Lucy, just still here. <laughs> Get on them, Devil Nation. Fact, he sure slept on as well. Oh, my God. 
Oh, uh, they're just the two. They're excited. They're excited. Yeah, I mean, Tony, right. this is like this is the other thing too that's comical is that if my hockey team acquired Timo Meyer, the last thing that I'm doing right now is listening to a Devils podcast. If it was the Rangers that acquired Timo Meyer, the last thing I'm doing is listening to a Devils podcast. But again, that's- we have, uh, we have respectful Devil fans on the channel, so I if the respectful fans like MSG Vault who's in the chat. He's cool, but for some of these devil fans, I mean, to talk like you're going to walk over the Rangers in the series, it's just, you're just completely they're just excited. out of your mind. That's fine. They're excited and they're happy to be back. And um, yeah, but I, like, we got to put things in perspective at, you know, at some point of time, realize like, okay, like what's actually, what could potentially happen? W. Latin for MVP is just a, such a W. Like W human being, W account. So great follow on Twitter. Great, great follow. follow on Twitter. I don't think he follows me, but I'm not gonna say my Twitter name now. Just no, he's following you. I looked. Oh, he did. Oh, W's in the chat. Left. Devils have the better, have the much better PK as well. Jim, as a Pittsburgh fan, is saying, honestly, the Devils won't give the Rangers as good of a series as Pittsburgh did. Potentially, maybe. I mean, this is an outsider here, so it's not just Ranger fans saying this. <laughs> like, a try. Wait, what? Loose change. Loose change. What are you saying? What do you say now? The track record is better. That's why. What? What? I, again, I'm still waiting for what the track record has to do with. <laughs> yes, we will. Modern day NHL. I'd love to hear that. And what track record have you guys had in the last eight years? One playoff appearance? Come on. Oh, my mistake. Okay, you're right. The Devils are winning the series. Yeah, you're right. The penalty kills better. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I completely left that out of the conversation. You make a good point. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm so, really sorry. Shame on you. We, we should have thought better before we talked about that. That's true. That is very true. <laughs> yeah, track record of missing the playoffs nine out of ten years seems pretty bad. Yeah, that's a fact. We appreciate the 52 viewers. Thank you uh, for sticking around. Just had to leave that out there. Always a pleasure. Oh, we got you, Cameron. We got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cameron the goat. Cameron the goat. <laughs> you're not a fan of the Devils. I mean, you're just not a Devils fan. You can't be. <laughs> you can't be a Devils fan and actually comment this. He probably <laughs> thinks Lou Lamoureux is like the best GM of all time. Like despite being a product of the neutral zone trap. Okay, buddy. Okay. So, guys, ladies and gentlemen, according to Devil's Nation, because they have more Stanley Cups, they're going to win the series. Let that sink in. That's, I, I, Nick, are you forgetting something, too? What? They, they just don't have more Stanley Cups. They just don't. <laughs> they don't. Oh, it's a prank. Of course it's a prank, Devil's Nation. Thank you, MJ, for the support. We appreciate that. And this was supposed to be Patrick Kane watch, too. Yeah, this became like... I don't know how Devil fans stumbled upon this Patrick Kane watch thing, but... If it was Rangers-Devils preview, okay, that's one thing, but this is a Patrick Kane watch, and Devil's fans are... (laughs) Because they're scared that the Rangers are getting Patrick Kane. <laughs> Devil's fan moment. Look at this comment. Those 19. <laughs> yeah. Is that a really? Yes, sir. One, two, two. Jock Lamar.
You and I both laugh. <laughs> These takes make me want to put my head. Yeah, for real. It makes us really entertaining, though, which I I love. Uh, I'll tell you, when you uh, do those recap videos for the Rangers, Devils, in the playoffs, you're going to get a shit ton of views. Just oh, it's going to be. It's going to go wild. It's going to be oh, bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, for all the Devils fans that are in chat right now, I really expect to hear from you guys because I'm going to keep the same energy if the Rangers lose. And I'm going to be, like I said, the big man, come to this microphone and admit I was wrong. If it's the other way around, I fully expect these devil fans to do the same, but it's just, but we know that's not going to happen. You and I both know that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, MJ, now you're starting to get it. <laughs> and that game against uh, the devils of when March 30th or whatever it is. Yeah. Give us a sneak peek of what to expect if both teams are playing their starters for sure. Yeah, if I was a Devil fan, I'd be scared of Kane too because like Tony Lowe said, they're scared about Kane. They're holding up the slimmest hope that doesn't happen. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now we know why double fans are scared. Now Holy we know shit. Fans. <laughs> I want to fact check this. It's Jover. Jover. Holy shit, if that's true. Patrick. Well, calm down, buddy. <laughs> buddy. Buddy. I'm happening? fact checking this one. Cause holy shit! Let me look this up too. Low key, I'm with you on this. Oh my god, it's accurate. Are you serious? I'm not even gonna look it up because I trust you. That's crazy. Well, now we know why uh, Devil fans are scared. Besides the fact that it's Patrick Kane, the stat total right here says it all. Wait a minute. Actually, wait. Let me. Let me see. Okay, 11 goals, 16 assists. Not um, 16 goals and 27 assists. 11 goals, 16 assists in 23 games. Oh, which okay. is still very solid. Yeah, which is still very good. 27 points in 23 games versus the Devils. <laughs> How many? 23 points in 23 games? And you aren't? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Because you sound more overconfident than us. Yeah. <laughs> Pete, are you scared of Patty Kane? Yeah, which is the right thing to be scared of. What Avery tweet now? King the Ranger. Tweet a video of the Patrick Kane sticker on his wall. Oh, W's. With the Ranger, he put a Rangers logo up in front of it. W. Oh, good. Nice, man. But still, I mean, his stats are still really good. good. 27 points in... Uh, 27 games is still very good. 23. 23 games. Oh, 23 games. That's even better. Over a point per game. Yes, sir, baby.
Um, I'm not too sure if they're going to do a press conference for the trade. I, usually they don't, but maybe. I don't know. going on rock how are you doing i wish this is true but like i can admit certain things that like i can admit things that are true and hughes is better than laffy i can admit that I got to fact check this now, too. What? Tarasenko's numbers versus the Devils. Yeah, that one's true. Five goals, 13 assists in 13 games versus the Devils. Yes, sir, baby. Yes, sir. We lit, we lit, we lit. What do you think Carolina does if you had the guess? Um, I think JVR, Gus Nyquist is really where they're going to go. Maybe they circle back to Max Domi again. That's where I think that their head's at if I had to take a guess. But they have to make some sort of move. Soon, soon, soon. Canes are in on Kevin Hayes. Like, I, that just... Like, no matter who they get, it's just like, I'm not impressed by them at all. I'm just not. By Kevin Hayes, you're saying? Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> also, taking on that contract would be interesting. Yeah, facts on the P. Did you see uh, this tweet earlier, by the way, that uh, someone thought was smart to tweet out? A Devils fan, by the way, of course. Yeah. New York Rangers are a graveyard where washed up players go for their careers to die. And on that list, he decided to throw in Chris Drury, Brad Richards, Marion Gabrick, Rick Nash, Whoa, Marty Sabre. Gabrick. It threw guys like that on the list. Yeah, okay. There, Gabrick, Richards, uh, St. Louis, Rick Nash. Um, I mean, you could say, eh, maybe not so much Rick Nash, but yeah, actually, you know what? I'll throw Rick Nash in there. Um, pretty big uh, reasons for some of our deep runs. 2012 Gabrick and Richards, and then Richards in 2014 as well with uh, St. Louis. So I don't know what he's saying. I don't know. Uh, devil fans being devil fans, right? <laughs> Checker would be an interesting ad for the Canes for sure. I don't think they're going to pay the price that they got Checker. Uh, yes, by Wednesday we'll have Kane. All right, listen, I got to get going. Good talk. That's fine. I got to get going too. So good talk to you, Chad. Thanks for joining. I'll see you guys yep. soon. maybe for uh part. What part are we at? Five. Yeah, maybe, part six. Yeah, maybe maybe we have a part ten soon. Do we do a part six later tonight, or do we just uh, yeah, we'll, wait till we'll, tomorrow? We'll, we'll text each other. We'll see. We'll see. All right. we'll see. There's a chance we'll be live again tonight. We'll see, but because we are a W channel, or he's a W channel, just saying so you guys know. W co-host. Okay. Mid co-host. Do, no. W co-host. Don't hide me up. It's okay. <laughs> All right, I'll, we'll, 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 we'll stay in touch, all right? Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll figure out what time. If we do, I guess around... All right, I got to go. I'll I don't see know. You. All right, see ya. Now, if we go live again sometime around 9, 10 o'clock, if I was to put a finger on it. But again, I'm not 100% sure if we're going to go live again. But that's going to be it for me for this afternoon at the very least. And if we're not talking tonight, hopefully there's a chance we're talking about the actual trade happening tomorrow. So... This may have been the last part, and if this was the last part, 
You guys absolutely killed it with support on this entire Patrick Kane watch series here. So hopefully, again, this is the last part. But if not, it will be what it will be. But again, I really do appreciate all the support as of lately. We've been growing like crazy on the channel. Let's see what we're up at subwise now before I uh, wrap up the show here. 1.683. We're killing it here. We're almost at two. We're getting the 2K. We're on the road to 2K. It's going to be a little bit of a long road, but we're working our way up. So I really do appreciate everything. Really do. But I will see you guys in the next live stream, which will either be tonight or tomorrow. And yeah, showtime's coming. I'll see you guys next time.